Hey everyone, how's it going? This is Mitchell here with a tutorial over how to use vectoring inside of the ES2, which is a plugin inside of Logic Pro 9. This is just one of many awesome features that the ES2 has to offer. So uh, yeah, let's get into this here now. Uh, I'm going to come over here and open up the ES2 synthesizer. And here it is. Now, um, this is just my default, um, my basic sign. Turn up a bit. Um, basic sine wave that I have rolling right now. But um, for this tutorial, I'm going to come down here into my synth leads and I'll just put, uh, oh, I don't know. Doesn't matter. Crunchy saw. That's what it sounds like. Um, just the preset. So uh, now I'm going to show you how to uh, use vectoring to change up this the the actual sound over time. Uh, so yeah, let's get right into it down here at the vector. This vector button is what you're going to be wanting to spend most of your time in. And when you open it up, there's going to be three dots here: one, two, and three. And this little sustain button will be here at number two and if you create more of these which is you're gonna want that to happen so I'll create an eight here you're gonna have a loop here at the bottom too so you have your loop and your sustain now this means that over this course of the time each of these each of these little buttons are, is, is gonna take up 12.5 percent of the time that it plays so say down here at the loop rate you're going, I'm going to set it as one half. So every half a note or half a beat, this whole bar will play. And during that time, 12.5 of the percent of the time at the beginning will go to this vector point, then 12.5 for this, uh, at right after this one, and then so on and so forth. And then what you can do for each of these spots is, say, grab this right here. And then you're going to want to hit solo point right here so you can hear what you're doing. And your X target here, it says cut off to, and your Y target is resolution to. Now, as you can see, there's many things that you can choose. Uh, cut off is a very good one. Um, I haven't worked too much with resolution, um, but there's just, just, you can just play around with it. There's so much you can do. So your X target and your Y target, and then right underneath both of them, is says INT. Um, what does that mean? I know what that means. Forgot what it means. I forgot what it means. It's it's rattling around in my head. Um, intensity. That's right. That's what it is. So the higher it is, the more intense that cutoff two will be on your on your X target. So now that now that this point is soloed. We can come over here. This is the vector box. This is the graphical interface um, that we just set up, the X target and the Y target. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press a button. And I can grab this little dot and move it up or down or wherever I want it to be. And then I can that would be what this point will be set to. So I'm going to grab it, set it to right there. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through each one of these. And I'm just going to set them pretty randomly. All right, there we are. Now that I have chosen random things for each one, um, when you... <clears throat> after the after you make this, you're gonna want to go up and switch a few of these spots around, just cause it in some parts it might not sound right. And honestly, after creating these eight points, you have no idea what this is going to sound like, and you're going to need to go back and fix this. But um, now that we have this all set up, I'm gonna come down here and uncheck the solo point, and I'm gonna have the curve. Um, it says hold plus step. Any of these concaves, the higher the concaves are, uh, the more 
Okay, I'm going to explain this as glide. The, the smaller the concave, the more glide it's going to have. Down here at linear, it's just going to be uh, very, uh, very, it's going to have a ton of glide, I guess you can say. Um, so here, let me, let me show you exactly what I'm talking about. I'm going to increase this concave to about 9 there, and I'm going to hit a button, and it's going to roll through this every half a beat. So here we go. Awesome. Actually, that sounds really cool without me having to do anything more. <coughs> okay. So right down here, as you can see, I can change the timing of it. Change it slower or higher. You can, um, I, one half sounds great for eight points, but you can definitely make this shorter. And as you make this shorter, this is going to have 25, each, each of these points are, is going to have 25% of the time as this, as you can see here. So it's going to, each point is going to take longer. And then when I play this, it's going to seem slower. So here we go. There we go. It's going to seem slower because there's only four points and it's going to be taking up 25% of the time instead of um, this one point taking up 12.5% of the time. So I'm going to increase that back and um, I'll show you what linear sounds like. Um, I, I guess, I mean, it's really not going to sound like so much because there's going to be a ton of glide on it, you can say. So here we go. It's cool, but um, again, if, if for something like this, um, most people are going for more of that, um, something like that. Uh, but you can definitely, definitely play with this linear. It sounds. It 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 is a different. Um, it is different for sure. Um, so there you are. That's basically what you can do. You can come down here. You can create sixteen instead of just eight points. Um, so yeah, and you can copy the point and and paste it to different spots if you like that exact tone that that single point has. Uh, it's very nice. You can also do that. And I would really, really uh, suggest playing around with these different targets here, um, seeing exactly what sounds that you can get out of this. Um, and I, and this is only for this one synth, this crunchy saw synth. You can you can play with the when when you first start out you can you can choose anything you can choose any of these presets or you can go and start building your own and then on top of that you can start using your vector to play with um, the different sounds over a period of time so there you are that is basically how to use vectoring in the ES2 if you have any questions please hit me up in the comments below. Uh, Yes, definitely. Just comment, comment it up. You know I like those comments. You know I like those comments. So yeah, um, rate, subscribe. You know, you know the deal. You know the deal, man. Have a good night. Peace out.